The first part of this is all about your um, operations with exponents. So even though this says operations with polynomials, really what we're looking at here is just monomials, simplifying monomials. Again, these are a lot of rules that you used in Algebra 1. Uh, the first one is the negative rules, and we've even reviewed these already some this year. So when you have something to a negative exponent, remember that actually equals 1 over that thing. Same thing if you have a negative exponent in the bottom, it really means it should be on the top. So for example, if I have an x to the negative 6, <clears throat> that really means that I should have a 1 over x to the 6th power. You could also do it the other way. If I have a, let's say, an a over b to the negative 2. Since that's a b to the negative 2 in the denominator, it really needs to move locations and come to the top. So this is really going to be a b squared. And sorry, I wrote that on those letters. We also have an example of what if you have, um, like, let's say, 1 over 2 to the negative first power. Well, the negative first power means the whole thing kind of needs to be flipped. So when I do that, that becomes a 2 over 1 to the first power, which is just 2 over 1. Okay, That rule is actually written out right here. So we have all these other rules, like I said, that you've used before. You know when you multiply exponents, like x to the third times x to the fifth, that you really just add them and get x to the eighth. You know that when you divide exponents, that you really just subtract them. So x to the fifth over x to the third is x squared. Or x to the third divided by x to the fifth is an x to the negative 2, which really means 1 over x squared. Okay, It all kind of makes sense if you really draw it out. If I had 3x's on top, 5x's on bottom, three of them would cancel out, and I'd be left with two extras on bottom, which is how I get an x squared on the bottom. The other ones are more of our power rules. So as a power to a power, you multiply those powers. So if I have x cubed squared, that's going to be x to the sixth power. Okay. Anytime you have two things, so if I had like 2x to the third, let's say to the fourth power, okay, that would be the same thing as 2 to the fourth power times x to the twelfth power. Remember, you multiply those. Well, 2 to the fourth power, that's 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So that would be 16x to the twelfth. Okay. This example is another good one. If I have, this is, I see this problem all the time, like 3 halves squared. You're like, oh, I can't do that. Well, you just square the top number and you square the bottom number. That's going to be 9 over 4 is 3 halves squared. Okay. The negative exponent here, uh, I've already done that, where you flip it. I guess apparently that's a, this is a big fat typo because that needs to be a B on the top and an A on the bottom. That's always fun when you can correct the notes. <clears throat> so let's just look at some examples. Now, there are tons and tons and tons of different ways you could see problems like this. There are also tons of strategies on the best way to do it. Okay, the first one is pretty basic. When you multiply, you add your exponents. So if I add a 12 to negative 4 to a positive 6, then that's going to be what? 14. Good. So c to the 14th power is your answer, and there's really no simpler way to do that one. Same thing on number 2. Remember, when you divide, you subtract your exponents. So 8 minus 2, hope you didn't say 4, that's b to the 6th power is your answer. Same thing on number three. A to the fourth power to the fifth power, what do you do with your exponents there? You multiply. So that's going to be A to the twentieth, and that's your answer. Okay, so starting to get a little more complicated when you have something like this. I usually just simplify these letters one at a time. So if I have x to the negative two, over x to the fourth. Remember when you divide, you subtract your exponents. So negative 2 minus 4 is actually a negative 6. So that's the same thing as x to the negative sixth power. Ooh, this next one's a tricky one. Looking at the y's, this is technically a y to the first minus y to the negative first. So that's y, that's 1 minus a negative 1. y squared. 
y squared to the positive 2. 1 minus negative 1, y squared. So technically, we don't actually like to leave negative exponents, so let's simplify this just a little bit more. The negative exponent needs to go to the denominator, and this is going to equal y squared over x to the 6. Okay. That's probably the way I would have worked this question. Now, again, there are other strategies to do. Some people prefer to move the negative exponents where they belong first. So like to say, well, that's an x to the negative 2. That really means you have an x squared in the denominator. That's a y to the negative 1. That really means you have y to the first in the numerator. And then just simplify it that way. That is completely up to you. Like I said, different strategies, different ideas. Same thing on this next one. There are different strategies here, too. Some people would say negative 1. Let's just flip it to start. Some people would simplify the inside first and then do everything to the negative first power. Some people would do everything to the negative first power first and then simplify from there. I think just for fun, I'm going to simplify the inside first. So just looking at the inside and ignoring this negative 1 to start. I subtract my exponents. So 2 minus negative 3 Again, that becomes addition, 2 minus negative 3, so that's a to the fifth power. b, again, this is a b to the first, so 1 minus 2 is b to the negative first. So that's just simplifying the inside. But all of this is still technically to the negative first power. When I do that, I just multiply my exponents. You know that. So that becomes a to the negative fifth, b to the positive first. Again, we do not like to have negative exponents. It just looks trashy. So let's move the negative one to the denominator where it belongs. That's b over a to the fifth. And this is your answer. Okay. Same thing on the next one. You pick the method you want to do. You could simplify the inside first and then square everything, or you could square everything to start and then simplify the inside. It doesn't matter. It's whichever method you want to do first. I guess, just for fun, to do something different, I'm going to square everything first. So if I square an x squared, that's an x to the fourth. If I square a y, that's a y squared over. If I square an x, that's an x squared. If I square the y cubed, that's a y to the sixth. Just checking. Now from here, again, I can just simplify. Subtract your exponents. 4 minus 2 is an x squared. 2 minus 6 is a y to the negative fourth. Good. And then again, take those negatives, put them in the denominator. That's x squared over y to the positive fourth power. Okay. If you think you're getting the hang of this, you should really just keep watching because all kinds of, or go ahead and work ahead Finish the rest of them and use me to check your answers here in just a second. Looking at this next one. Now here, I would say order of operations matters a little bit more. You have to do exponents before you can multiply two separate things. Okay, That's not the same as dividing the inside first and then squaring everything. You could do that first because uh, the stuff's on the inside of that. You know, Technically, you are supposed to do stuff inside the parentheses first before you do exponents, but either way would actually get you the same answer there. Here, it would not because you're multiplying outside the parentheses. So we need to square these things first. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is square that. Well, negative 5 squared, don't forget you're squaring a negative 5. That's a positive 25. A squared squared is a to the fourth. B to the third squared is b to the sixth. Good. When you square a, b, c, you get a squared, b squared, c squared. Good. Don't forget you have the 1 half here in front. So 1 half of 25, I'm not going to put decimals in this. I'm going to leave that as just 25 over 2. When I combine my a's, a to the 4th, a squared, that's an a to the 6th because I add exponents. b to the 6th, b squared, that's b to the 8th. c squared stays, and this is your answer. Ooh, 8, we're throwing it back to an easy question. What do you do with your exponents there? You add them, m to the 15th. All right, what about question number nine? Just a simple division question. Eight divided by four, two. Three 
m's divided by 1m. Again, I subtract those exponents. That's just going to be an m squared. Okay. I have two n's on top, one n on bottom. That's going to be an n to the negative 1. Or I know the negative 1 or that there's more in the denominator, so I'm just going to leave the n in the denominator. I actually skipped a step there. Feel free to do that when you work on your own. But if you need to go ahead and write it out, you can do that too. Question number 10. A little problem here. Be sure you actually cube the 2. That's not 2 times 3. That's 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. 8 c to the fourth. I'm just going to simplify the numbers to start over. 2 squared is 4. c to the fourth t squared. Those cancel. Those cancel. 8 divided by 4 is just 2. So that's actually one way you could have done this. The other way you could have done this is just starting from the beginning, subtract your exponents. So 2 to the third divided by 2 squared. I can still subtract those and just get 2 to the first power. Subtract your exponents here. 4 minus 4 is 0. That means there's no c's, t's, no t's. 2 to the first. Well, 2 to the first is just 2. So two different ways you could have worked that one. Question number 11. A lot of things to multiply together. So just be careful when you're multiplying. 4, 4 times a negative 1 times a 3. So that's something people forget. That negative in front does not mean a negative exponent. It's just a negative number. And they didn't write the 1 there, but it's understood to be a negative 1. 4 times negative 1 times 3 is a negative 12. Now I can look at my j's. I have 1j here. I have negative 2j's here. And I have 3j's here. Well, 1 minus 2 plus 3. 1 minus 2 plus 3. That's j to the second power. Then I can look at my k's. k squared, k to the negative seventh. 2 minus 7 is a negative 5. I know a k to the negative fifth power means I need to have a k to the fifth in the denominator if I'm going to write that without negative exponents. Again, this negative 12 in front does not mean 1 over 12. That is just a negative 12. The exponent is what's negative to make it go into the denominator. One last question here, and a lot to go on. The very first thing I would do if I were you would be to square that. So if I square that 3m squared n, all squared, that's going to be 9m to the fourth n to the second. From there, I'm going to multiply that to 2m n squared. So I can do that pretty easy. Now I'm just simplifying the top here. Simplify the top. When I do that, 2 times 9, you know that that's 18. How many m's do I have? 1 here, 4 here, m to the 5th. How many n's do I have? 2 and 2, that's n to the 4th. All divided by, I haven't done anything yet to this 12, m, 3, and 4. Okay. You can already see pretty easy, those n's are going to cancel out. I'm going to have an m to the second power, 18 divided by 12. Please don't write that as a decimal, just simplify the fraction. Both of those numbers are divisible by 3. Even bigger would be 6. If I divide this by 6, I get 3. Divide the bottom one by 6, I get 2. 3 over 2m squared is your answer.